Okay, the next matter up. You know this old guy. You know he's limping while I'm limping. I think everybody in the room limps somewhat. Somewhat. But uh, Ron Jacober, who is uh, the Cardinals, the Blues, the Big Red, Cable X Radio, multi Hall of Famer, and uh, really a, a legend for us at the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame. Ron Jacober. I'm glad you're here, buddy, because you're going to be here as well. Where is Steve's tissue? Where is he? Come on up here. I covered the soccer in St. Louis for decades, and in my mind, there's five or six guys that were really soccer royalty, and this guy is in that group, soccer royalty. Steve Tissue. So, welcome back home, by the way. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a while, so, but uh, yeah, I'm back here now and started to settle in. Started at Grand City High School, High School All-American, went to SIU Amazon. Uh, college All-American, and you were the beneficiary of two great coaches when you were young, weren't you? Yes, I was. So, you know, coming out of college, um, I had a few choices, but uh, at the time, everybody remembers Bob Gilker. So he came and um, pitched a good deal to me, and so I ended up going to SIU. Uh, unfortunately, my junior year is, is the year he died, and then Ed Hunnicky, he's back there, sitting back there, he, he took over my senior year, and. You know, he had, had a big influence on my career as going into professional. Uh, you went from, uh, well, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, but when you were in high school in Granite City, I would think most of the soccer powers were on the Missouri side of the river. High school soccer on the Illinois side really didn't grow until a number of years later. Is that pretty accurate? Yeah, for sure. You know, I had the time, so back in the, I, I guess, 79 or 79 to 83 or whenever it was uh, when I was there, you know, we had great rivalries. Um, I know a lot of the guys from Granite City South are here tonight. Uh, I, and, you know, and it's great seeing Coach Baker here. I haven't seen him in years, but you know, back then it was, it was there were huge rivalries really between um, Granite City North where I went to school um, that was coached by Bob Keel, which I know he's, he's been in, in the Hall of Fame. Fortunately, he died a few years ago. And you know, Granite City South and Collinsville, those are three big major uh, 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 high schools back then that really, we really competed for a lot of things back then. But uh, unfortunately, South won a lot, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> I probably did two or three hundred soccer broadcasts, but every one of them was indoor soccer. You had the same experience really when you got out of college. There was really no outdoor league that you could join. So you had to go the indoor league, right? Yeah, so, um, you know, coming out of college, so I finished in 1987, and at the, actually at the time is when I started with the, the national team, and uh, they, were, they were forming the Olympic team for the 88 games, uh, and, I was, and they had us actually on full-time contracts, so I was trying to find something else to do, and so, at the time, the steamers were the biggest thing in town. It was, uh, yeah. and so you know, and and, and, and watching them grow up, I, I watched all those guys play, and I was like, I always wanted to play for the steamers, and then I was drafted by them, and and I chose to stay and, and do kind of both. So I was with yeah. the national team, the Olympic team, and I played the the last year of the steamers in 1987, 88. Um, unfortunately, they folded that year, but it was a great thrill to play in front of those crowds there down at the Checker Dome. And um, it, it was just a great honor to play them. You know, there was a time when the Steamers had the second highest attendance in indoor sports in North America. The only team that drew bigger crowds, the Edmonton Oilers. The Steamers, in one year, it was phenomenal. Well over 17,000 at Old Barn on Oakland Avenue. Now, going from indoor soccer to outdoor soccer to the outdoor game is a tough transition. Not many guys were able to do it. How did you do it? Well, like I said, I kind of played both of them. So I was I was also traveling with the national team at the time, so I was kind of double dipping there a little bit. Uh, um, and I, I really only played the one year with the Steamers, and then, um, and then you know, we qualified for the World Cup in 1990, first time in 40 years, and um, I, I was part of that team. And, and fortunately, I was seen by a couple of scouts in Europe, and so I kind of started my European career there uh, in 1990. Yeah, you were signed by the team in Prague, right? Yeah, like the first time, um, so back in 1990 when communism kind of started changing and that was the first time, I was the first foreigner in, in, in Prague in 50 years and uh, 
it, it was it was it was a great experience for me. It was I was the first American to play in what we all see now on the TV, the Champions League, and but back then it was called the European Cup. Right. But, uh, uh, yeah, I was the first American to play in that. Uh, so it, it, it led to a lot of things. I spent another year in, in playing in, in, in the Netherlands. Uh, um, played in Thailand a little bit, played in, in Montreal, so I've I kind of been a lot, a lot of different places. You have a lot of bags of your luggage, right? I like, do, yeah. I got a lot of memory, so it was, it, was, it was a great experience for me, and um, you know, I've, led, I've, I've taken a lot of my playing career into my coaching career. Just as a side, three or four years ago, we spent a week in Prague. What a beautiful, wonderful European city. They had a McDonald's there, I noticed. They didn't then, I believe they didn't then, I know that. All right, World Cup. Olympics. Which was the biggest to you? You know, I'm, I'm asked that question a lot. And so back in the 80s, obviously, soccer was big. Soccer was big always in, in, in the in St. Louis area. But, it, you know, I, and people always ask, you know, what, what was your favorite thing? And I said, well, you know, I played in the 80 Olympics and the, the 90 World Cup. And they were like, wow, you played the Olympics? And so, because <laughs> no, nobody really knew about the World Cup until you know, maybe the last 10, 15 years, but uh, no, it was a great honor. Um, in two, both, in two of the greatest venues, biggest venues in, the, in sports in the world. Oh yeah, for sure. And and um, but to for, for me personally, obviously, to play in the win, or in, sorry, in the World Cup was was a great thrill for me. For me, um, and we were young kids back then, and, and going into going into Italy and playing. You know, we played Czechoslovakia the first game, which actually, fortunately, led me to my first career, right. my first professional team there. Um, and then, but playing at Rome in front of in, in, in Italy, playing in front of I think about eighty thousand people there. Um, but that was that was fantastic. That's good to make your heart pump, doesn't it? Yeah, for sure. Okay, it was it was, it was the greatest experience uh, uh, as a, as a player to play a, a host kind of a host team in, in their country. Um, they won, unfortunately, but uh, it was a great experience. As a broadcaster, I worked the Olympics for CBS, and it was great to do that. But I was always envious of the athletes who could pull on that uniform with the USA across the front. That must be just shiver, some shivers through you. It, it did. And, um, obviously, going to the Olympics is a big thing for Americans, uh, which I'm, I'm very proud of doing that. And also playing the Pan Am Games at one time. Um, but for, for me, playing, because you know, soccer is a sport I've always loved. And to, to be able to go to, to a World Cup uh, and to represent the United States, um, it, it was just, it was an experience I'll never forget. Do you still have the shirt? I have every shirt, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, you, you've been coaching in Colorado. Now, you're back in St. Louis now, coaching for St. Louis FC. Yeah. The, the soccer team, I still call it soccer park. I don't know what they're calling it. It's a soccer park. So, it's yeah. a soccer park to me. But you're back coaching again. Yeah, so, Here. And, and you know, I mean, I. While I was playing, I, I tried to coach as much as I could. Actually, I, I, I was assistant with Ed at SIU one year also, but I tried to stay involved on the coaching side, actually when I was playing, to maybe one day be a coach. And unfortunately, uh, you know, I, I went back and I was assistant in the MLS with the Colorado Rapids for four years, and then um, the past five years I've been in Colorado Springs uh, with the, it's called the USL1, which is the second division in the United States. Uh, but um, things happened here, and I was fortunate to be able to be named the, the head coach of St. Louis FC about a month and a half ago. you got to be excited about the new franchise. The new franchise coming here with a new stadium and everything, too. Oh, it's, it's crazy. Things are happening here. Um, you know, there's a, there's a huge fan base for us here, and um, and the way you know MLS is, is, is overtaking a lot of, a lot of sports in the, in the United States here, and um, the MLS uh, coming to St. Louis is I know it's been a, a dream of a lot of the soccer people around here, and that's two years down the line. So I just need to have some good success in the next couple of years, and hopefully maybe move on to that. Now, will finally, will your team, the FC team, be a feeder for the MLS team, or is that part of the plan? Uh, everybody's been asking that question. Right now, it's kind of still in the air, uh, uh, but. Uh, I'm just kind of worried about this season. We're in preseason right now and, and ready to get going March 7th, so you guys want to come out. Uh, yeah, but you're, you're, game. your owner is also one of the new owners he's, of the MLS He is, and he's actually a guy that I played with. You guys would know Jim Cavanaugh. He played with Steamers with me right. back when, and so, um, but he's one of the big owners now. And, uh, you know, he, he wants it to be successful there, and I, I know it will be. I mean, the, the plans for the stadium downtown right there, um, right by Union Station, which uh, it's a fantastic plans and so hopefully it'll it'll be big. Ladies and gentlemen, soccer royalty, Steve Trichard.